In this video, we are going to look at retrieving the IP and port information of a newly accepted connection. Let's go down to our accept function in our socket class, and we see that we are not using the second and third argument when we call accept. Since we're using Internet Protocol version 4, we know that our IP can be represented with a sock adder instruct. We're going to create a struct and then zero out the memory, and then we also need to uh, store the length of this struct inside of an integer. Now when we call accept, we can pass in the address to our sock adder instruct as well as an address to the length, and we can cast this to a sock adder pointer. Now in case you're wondering why we pass in a reference to the length, if you are supporting Internet Protocol version 6 and you want to support both version 4 and version 6 connections, then what will happen is when a new connection happens, this will be filled with the size of whatever the struct was that could populate that connection information. So, for example, if we got an Internet Protocol version 4 connection, then it would be size of sock adder in. However, if we got an Internet Protocol version 6 connection, then we would get a size of sock adder in 6. One thing about this is the initial struct that you pass in the pointer to in the initial length have to be big enough to support the whole sock adder in 6 struct, or else the data will be truncated to whatever the size is that you do pass in. We'll look more into this when we go into implementing support for Internet Protocol version 6. For now, what we want to do is, if the connection was successful, we want to print out what the IP information is. I'd like to make a constructor for IP endpoint that will take in a sock adder. What we will do is we will go to IP endpoint, create a new constructor. Notice that I'm not specifying the Internet Protocol version 4 or 6 version. We can actually figure out which it is from the family value in sock adder and then cast it accordingly. Let's generate the definition. What we are going to do here is we're only supporting version 4, so we're going to assert that it is a version 4 address. The socket address family should be AFINet if it is Internet Protocol version 4. Now we know that we can cast this to a sock adder and pointer. At this point we can determine that the IP version for this IP endpoint will be IP version, version 4. For the port, we can get the port by accessing the SIN port member. However, one thing about this is the port will be in network byte order, and we want to get it in host byte order. So we will call n2hs, and this is for converting from network to, whoopsie, network to host byte order, and we are converting a short. Something important to note is before we had used H2NS for converting from host to network byte order, and these two functions are exactly the same. The only reason that they have different names is so that it's clear in your code when you're converting from host to network byte order and where you're converting from network to host byte order. But they will both accomplish the same thing. On a big Indian architecture operating system, these functions do absolutely nothing, because network byte order is big Indian, but I'm on a little Indian architecture, so this will be converting it, essentially just reversing all of the bytes. Next we want to fill in the IP bytes, so we know the bytes will take up 4 bytes, which is the size of an unsigned long, and then we need to copy the bytes into our bytes array. Next, we need to convert the address from network to presentation format, which if we scroll up, we did this already right here. So I'm just going to copy these three lines and go down and paste them. So we're resizing to 16 since it's an Internet Protocol version 4 address. And instead of host adder, we're passing in adder v4 and converting that to presentation format, storing it in IP string. And then for host name, we will just set that equal to IP string. 
since we won't know the host name when we're just given a sock adder. One other thing I'd like to go ahead and put in here is for IP endpoint, I'd like to just add in a print. And this will just print out information about this IP endpoint. I need to add the include for IOStream. Quick review of what we'll do here is we'll print out the IP version, print out the host name, the IP string, and then the individual IP bytes on their own lines. Let's go to the socket CPP. And what I'd like to do is when we get a new connection, I'd like to print out information about that IP endpoint. I need to include IOStream so I can view C out. Before we print that new connection info, I'll just put new connection accepted and then we will print the information after that. So let's rebuild all this and see what it looks like. First we are going to run the server. And then we are going to run the client. So you see we get uh, the host name, the IP, the individual bytes, the internet protocol version. An awesome new connection accepted. One thing I forgot to put in there was I'd also like to print out the port. I'm going to rebuild everything and run the server again and the client. All right, so now we get the port, which something important to note here is the server is binding and listening on port 4790. When the client connects, the client is using 59433. So what you need to know here is when you connect, you're just using a random unused port is getting assigned on the client side. And the client knows when it sends its packet, that it knows that it's sending it to port 4790, and then we get that packet on port 4790, and then we see what port that they used, which in this case would have been 59433, and when we go to send a packet back, this will be the port that it will be getting sent to. With TCP, we don't have to specify these things, like the port that we're sending it to, but later on with UDP, we will. That concludes this video, and in the next video, we are going to send and receive our first packet.